Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be doing my best of beauty. So I did pull things from kind of like each category, but there's some categories I'm not really talking about. Like I didn't choose anything that I had mentioned in previous best of beauties because I just don't want to be too repetitive. There's some things that I'm obviously still loving, still using, still holy grails, but I just don't want to re-mention them in a video. So I will have my previous Best of Beauties linked down in the description box down below in case you want to watch those, in case you're curious. So yeah, make sure to subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. And if you want to see my Best of Beauty, then just keep on watching. So we're just going to like kind of quickly get through this. I don't want to spend too much time on one product talking because I don't want to be here for like an hour talking about these products. So I'm going to try and move quickly through these. So first we're going to start off with skin prep or primer. I have really been into the hydrated skin kind of this year. Like I, especially like these past few months, I've been kind of getting more into like the dewy glowy skin. I do have oily combination skin in case you are curious. So yeah. First thing I'm going to start off with is the Summer Fridays Jack Lag Mask. This is just it's technically an overnight mask, so you kind of lather this on and you can leave it on for overnight. I think you can leave it on for just like a few hours, whatever you want to do, but you can also use this as a moisturizer. So I will take the tiniest bit of this. Honestly, like a pea size amount is all you need because it is a mask, so it is pretty thick. And I will use this like underneath my makeup as like a skin moisturizing prepping situation because I have seen some people use this as their skin prep but I always just felt like it'd be too thick and it would make me oily but it doesn't at all it just sinks into the skin really nicely it feels so nice and moisturizing on the skin it's not too thick it's not going to make you oily if you have oily skin I honestly love 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 this I don't love the tube I actually like the way these tubes look but in practicality, they're not the best. I feel like it can be hard to get product out, especially when you're starting to get to kind of like where I'm at. But yeah, this is pricey, but I definitely think it's worth it because I love, love using this underneath makeup. I never have a problem with peeling, getting oily, anything like that. This has just been my favorite. Obviously, I have been loving this. So that is the first thing next is the lms superfood glowing priming moisturizer so i actually got this in a boxy charm and i really wasn't using it very often i use it every so often as like a moisturizer but then i started mixing it with things because this does have a really pretty like radiant glowy finish to it but it's not like overboard it just looks really nice on the skin and it is a moisturizer so it's gonna like really moisturize the skin I just really like this so I'll use it on my own I'll mix it in like if I'm not doing any makeup that day but I kind of just want like a lip from within glow like like the healthy skin radiance I'll mix it in with my daytime moisturizer I'll mix it in with my summer friday jet lag mask use this as like a prep that's what I did today actually it mixes really well you can wear it on your own on its own as a glowy moisturizer I really, really like this. This is kind of pricey, but um, honestly, I've just been really loving it. So, yeah, I wanted to mention those. Okay, two. now for more like actual primers. So, the first one is the Catrice. No, I always want to call this Catrice. The Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. So, this is Makeup Grip Moisturizes and Perfects. So, this is supposed to be dupe for the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer which I do really like that one. That one is kind of finicky. Like you have to like rub it on, kind of let it sit for a few minutes and then put on your makeup because if you put it on and then do your start foundation, another primer, whatever, it will peel and kind of get like all gunky. So that one is a little finicky. I actually like this one more than the Milk Makeup because this one's, I really want to say this one's almost like a little bit thinner because I don't have problems like even today I didn't really let it sit I maybe let it sit for like 10-15 seconds and then I just went in with my other primer and I don't have problems with this one ever peeling on me nothing ever gets kind of weird and gunky everything works with this one so I don't I like this one more if you tried the milk makeup one and you didn't like it but you really want a gripping primer try this one out I think it's like three or four dollars maybe no it might be a little bit more 
I can't remember exactly how much this is, but it is a, a Walmart brand. I think you can only get hard candy at Walmart, but it is such a good primer. It really does grip the makeup. It really does help to prolong. If Again, if you like the milk makeup, but it was just too finicky and you kept having problems with the peeling, this is like, to me, this is the better version of the milk makeup Hydro Grip. So I have been obsessed with this. And then my next primer is the One Size Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer. I mean, if you have watched my channel since I got this, you know that I cannot put this down. I love this primer. It is so blurring. It is so flawless. It makes your makeup last for so long. I'm not kidding. This really is like the best primer I found that helps to prolong my makeup. I still love my Smashbox Oil and Shine Control Primer, but this one is so good. It, I mean, I'm telling you, it just gives you like the most flawless canvas but it doesn't break me out or anything weird. It doesn't make me oily. It has that nice, um, I don't know if this has silicone in it, but it has that like that really nice, like, like almost like a gel type consistency. I don't have anything problems with it, like peeling or anything like that, but this is the best one I have found that helps to kind of keep my makeup from rubbing off in a mask. Now, like I've said before, it's honestly, really hard to keep from your makeup rubbing off at all if i wear this one i get like the tiniest little bit of transfer with the mask so this one is the best that i found for flawless canvas and prolonging the wear time of your makeup it is just my favorite so moving on to foundations i only have two to mention and these ones i have been loving since i've gotten them so i have the rare beauty foundation i can't remember exactly what it's called and it doesn't say but i have mine in the shade 110 n so with this foundation you definitely want to make sure that you shake it it does have like the little shaker ball in it and then it just comes out with a doe foot there's just something about this that i love using when I'm just wanting to do a quick makeup, but I want to wear foundation, so I'm just going to throw this on. I don't know if it's just like the doe foot that it's just like makes it so easy just to apply really fast and then head out the door because I love this. So the first time I tried this foundation, I actually didn't really love it because it just looked too dry. Um, so with this one, I really do like to moisturize underneath it. The reason I kind of was using such mattifying products the first time I used it is everyone who said... I feel like the, the opinions on this foundation were so mixed. You either loved or hated it. A lot of people said this made them so oily that it broke up during the day. It was greasy. I haven't had a problem with that at all. This wears really nice on me. Priming with the primers that I just mentioned. I have no problem with this looking dry anymore. I have no problems with this wearing really nicely. Like, I love this. I love that you can do like a really, really sheer coverage with it or you can really build it up to a full coverage if you want to. Again, I like to keep my foundations at more of a medium coverage. Like I want my skin to look flawless, but I still kind of want to peek through a little bit. So I have been loving this foundation and I just, I can't stop using it since I got it. So I've been obsessed with that one. And then I also wanted to mention the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 15 foundation. It says up to 24 color, 24 hour color wear and comfort transfer resistant. I don't really know about the transfer resistant to be honest. I don't know if I really tested it, but I do have mine in the shade 090 Ivory In. You guys, this foundation, if I'm going more full glam, I actually am wearing the Rare Beauty today and I went pretty full glam. But I love this foundation. I do like that it has sunscreen in it. But honestly, I don't really care if a foundation has sunscreen in it or not. I'm still wearing my own sunscreen. But this one, I think I've mentioned it before. It's like a your skin, but better. It gives you a nice coverage. Really, like, smooths out everything. Covers everything. But it doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look cakey. It just like it's it's like if you, it's your skin but better it's if your skin I don't know it just it looks so nice on the skin it wears all day long I don't have a problem with it transferring but I honestly don't know if I've even really paid attention to it but I've never noticed like crazy transfer and 
I don't have a problem with the oxidizing. That's another reason I stayed away from this foundation. A lot of people said oxidized. On me personally, I don't have that problem. And this color, it works really nicely for me. But this foundation is so worth the money. It really does look like your skin, but better. That's like the best way I can describe it. I do like a pump of this because I do like to keep it more medium. This is definitely more medium to full coverage. So yeah, these have been my two favorite of the year. And then going along with that, I wanted to go ahead and mention concealers. So I have quite a few. This has been the year of concealers for me because I've tried out a bunch. I've loved a bunch. And here lately, if I'm just kind of want to do a quick makeup, I'll just do little dots of concealer cover, redness, blemishes, whatever. And then I'll just powder. Don't wear any foundation at all. But I have been loving these ones specifically. <laughs> First one, I'll go ahead and mention like the con... con the coinciding? No, wait. Okay, I can't think of what I'm trying to say, but y'all know what I mean. So the first one I'll mention is the Rare Beauty Concealer. Again, when I first tried this one, I didn't like it. It looked really dry underneath the eyes. So I feel like this one is more of a matte finish. It's definitely not as hydrating as some of the other ones I'm going to mention. But I, what really made me fall in love with this, I took this to the beach. It was so hot. It was so humid. Every single day, it literally was just like instant sweat as soon as you like stepped outside and this wore so good on my skin i did not have problems with this breaking up i didn't have problems with it looking all weird it looked so good by the end of the night now obviously it didn't look perfect but it still looked so good and it really did look really nice and it wore really well so again i have this in the shade 110 n which is the same shade as this I have just really loved it. Again, I do love the applicator. I love that it's like this like angled like doe foot. Again, I will have like pictures of it. I just really love it. This is, I would say this one's a little bit thicker and a little bit more matte than the foundation, but I have still just been loving these together, not together, whatever. But again, since it is more mattifying, I would really hydrate it underneath the eyes if you kind of have more dry under eyes. Or if you are someone who doesn't like to use powder, you would not have to set this concealer. So yeah, I have been obsessed with these. Then I also want to mention the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. I have mentioned this before. This is in the shade 090. I'll have swatches in the video, but these are not the same shade at all. I just want to mention it in case you're curious. For some reason, the concealer is actually quite a bit deeper. I would say it's a few shades darker and it's um almost like a warmer undertone even though this is like the neutral shade and this is the lightest shade that they currently offer so just wanted to mention that real fast but I absolutely love this concealer the one major flaw that I don't like with this concealer and I actually seen someone mention it and I was like okay so it's not just me who's thought about this like when you the doe foot is bigger than the stopper so it does a really good job at like scraping off any extra product but because the doe foot is so much bigger it gets stuck and you kind of have to pull it so it can kind of like fling concealer everywhere but other than that i love this concealer this i only tried this back in like i want to say it was like october or november i can't exactly remember but i no no, that's a lie. I tried this in like September, but ever since then, this has been like one of my absolute favorites. If you know me, you know that I absolutely love the Laura Mercier Ultra Longwear Concealer. That has been one of my holy grails since I started this channel. Still is. Love that concealer, but this is a close second to that one. It is, it's hydrating, so it blends like a dream. Like it honestly blends like butter on the skin. It takes no time to blend it. I feel like this would work really well for mature skin. It would work well for a teenager. If you have acne prone skin, if you have dry skin underneath your eyes, I feel like you're going to love this because it's hydrating enough that it just goes on so smoothly. It looks like skin underneath the eyes. doesn't ever look cakey or heavy, but it still has coverage. This will make your skin look so flawless, so beautiful. It has a nice... Full, I would say it's more on like the fuller coverage, but you can obviously the less you use, the less coverage you're going to get. And I love it. It's just like, 
It's one of my absolute favorites. I cannot get it. So moving on to some other concealers. Um, I'm going to mention this one real fast. So this one is kind of more for my full glam girls. My girls who like like a full glam matte look. This is the one size um, turn up the base butter silk concealer in the shade Fair to R. One, I really do love his shade range on his concealers because they are very like focus on like undertone they have a wide range i just i really do like it but this concealer is very full coverage it gives you the coverage if let's say it's more of a mattifying concealer it kind of has like um the doe foot that kind of reminds me of the rare beauty but i will say this one does the stopper is like almost not big enough for this one because a lot does come out i don't know if you're really going to be able to see but a lot comes out on the doe foot and like around it so but i just scrape off what i want a little goes a long way with this concealer because it is more of a fuller coverage it sets down really nice but i will say it will set down quickly because it is more of a mattifying concealer so i wouldn't like put this down and then go do bronzer and blush i would blend this out like pretty much as soon as you put it on like obviously you don't have to like put one on and then like hurry up to blend it but I wouldn't let it sit for a few minutes because it will start to set down. But because of that, it does wear really, really long time. So if I'm going full glam that day and I want it to last all day, I will use this concealer because it once it's set, it is set. It's not going anywhere. It gives you a nice full coverage. It gives you a nice mattified look. So in the summertime, I really do like this concealer because I do get quite a bit more oily then. But yeah. Just wanted to mention this in case you're a full glam gal and you want a mattifying concealer. You're going to love this one. And then on like the other spectrum. So I wanted to mention the Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade 0.5N. So I never wanted to try this one mostly because everyone talked about how yellow the shades were. So it kind of always like deterred me from it. But then I, um, they extended their shade range, so I finally picked it up, and I really do love this. First, I love the packaging. I love the simplicity of it, but I love, like, the bright yellow lid. I don't know. I just really like it. But this concealer is so nice for every day. If you, this concealer could work for someone who doesn't like to wear a lot of makeup and someone who likes a full glam because you can definitely build it up. Or you can really sheer it out and just have, like, a light coverage. But I love that it's not matte. What I've come to learn about myself this year especially is with concealers, I kind of prefer a more hydrating like concealer. So like the Laura Mercier, it still has like a matte finish, but it's a lot more hydrating. It's like a hydrating matte concealer, which I really do like. Now this one is just like hydrating and it kind of has more of a natural to radiant finish. So again, if you have mature skin, you'd probably really like this one because it is hydrating. But it's not going to like dry down and matte and kind of sink in it to any fine lines. So yeah, I do really like this one. I love it for every single day. I wear it all the time. Am I wearing this one today? I think I did the Lancome like a little bit right here. And then I took this one and like put it here. So I really do like this concealer. It looks really nice and natural on the skin again. It's a little bit more hydrating and it kind of has more of a natural radiant finish, but it's great for every day and I do really love this one. And then um, one from e.l.f. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. You can see how much I have been using this concealer. I really like this one. I think I might like it more than the matte one, to be honest. The matte one I do like, but again, I found that I really do like a hydrating concealer. I, they're just easier to work with. The matte one, I do still really like that one again for fuller coverage days. But this one is so good for every day because it's more of, like it says, it's more hydrating. Since it is more hydrating, it's more of a medium coverage. You can obviously build it up with how much you use. But it's a little bit more hydrating. But again, I just love it for every single day because I just put a little bit on here, a little bit there on the nose, call it a day. It wears really nicely on the skin. I love the color of it. I just, I can't stop reaching for it. And when I first got it, this is literally the only concealer I've ever reaching for. So yeah, 
If you tried the mattifying one, you didn't really love it, but if you want a nice hydrating concealer from the drugstore, this is a really, really good one. Moving on to powder. So I only have two to mention. I obviously am still loving the ones that I mentioned in my last Best of Beauty, but I wanted to mention the One Size Ultimate Setting Powder. This is in the shade Translucent. So again, I'm wearing this today. I have just been loving One Size. Honestly, I don't really love the packaging, I will say, because it only comes out of um, the little line. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but it kind of is hard to get powder out of it without making a mess. But I also just love this powder. I mean, I have been loving one size. I feel like it gives you a nice flawless finish. It adds a little bit of coverage, but... It just makes my makeup set all day. It doesn't get cakey. It never looks too powdery. It's just so good. This is honestly has been like my favorite powder since I've gotten it. I can't stop reaching for it. Then I want to mention the one size Turn the Base Versatile Foundation Powder. And this is in the shade Fair One NR. I have been using this a lot. Like I'm starting to rub off the name. So this powder... If you want a finishing powder, you can use it as a powder foundation. I will say I haven't tried this as a powder foundation, but I'm sure it's beautiful and amazing. I just love that. Sometimes with some powder foundations, to use them as like a setting powder or a finishing powder, it can get cakey. It can be too much coverage. Like the Makeup Forever, I do like that one, but I don't like it underneath my eyes. I think that one underneath my eyes, especially if you use too much, can get really cakey really fast. I'll just take a little powder brush after I've already set my face, sprayed it, everything, and just like as a last step, I'll just take it and I'll just kind of like just lightly, a light dust underneath the eyes and I love it. I'll use this as my setting powder on like more natural days and I don't want to use like a loose powder. I'll just take a powder brush or something and I'll just like set the under eyes and be good to go and this will help my makeup to last all day long. So yeah, I just absolutely love this powder foundation. It's just the best I've tried. Again, I haven't tried as a powder foundation, but for like setting or as a finishing powder, it really is the best that I've tried. Okay, so moving on to probably what I have the most for, bronzer and blushes. So we're going to first start out with bronzer. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is the Milani Silky Mount Bronzing Powder in Sunlight 01. I will say I wish the shade range was bigger on this bronzer. It really is so annoying. It's so hard to find bronzers at the drugstore, but this is the best I have found. If you can find a shade that works for you, this really is the best. I never loved the Physicians Formula one or the matte one. As you know, I tried that one. I didn't love that one because it's literally two colors and they're like orange. But this one is so good. I love the undertone of it. I love the way it blends. To me, this reminds me so much of the Fenty Beauty bronzer. So if you've tried those or if you've been wanting to try those but they're a little too expensive, this is literally so similar. I love this bronzer. I use it all the time. Did I use this one today? No, I didn't use this one today, but I absolutely love this bronzer. The best that I found at the drugstore. Then I want to talk about the Kosas Soft Bronze. So this one is a little bit more glowy. So I'm going to actually also talk about the Huda Beauty Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder in 01 Light. So these two are very similar. They kind of do a similar thing. The colors are different. So that is what they look like right there, but they're both more of a glowy bronzer. I will say I think the Kosas might be just a smidge more glowy than the Huda Beauty one, but they are both pretty much the same thing. I love both of these as like a bronzer topper. So after I've already bronzed or creamed or whatever I've done, I'll go back over this and this just gives me such a healthy lip from within glow because they're not shimmery like highlighters. They're literally just like a bronzer with just a smidge of like a natural radiance. And I absolutely have been loving to use these as like a bronzer topper. I just love both of these. Both of these are not like glittery or shimmer on me. They just give me that nice healthy look to my skin. So love these. And then I want to mention the Juvia's Place bronzer, or wait, what's this called? bronzed palette I don't 
I don't really know what this is called, but this is the shade Light. I think they have five shades. The shade rating on this is so good. You do get two in one. I got this at Ulta. So this one's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit warmer, and this one's a little bit lighter. and has a little bit more of a cool undertone. This is the one I'm wearing today. If you tried the Jouer Bronzer Duo, this is the exact same thing, but like I want to say like $10 or $15 cheaper. I can't remember, but this one is so good. I absolutely love this one. I have been using it all the time. I think I got this back in like August or September. I can't really remember, but it's so good. I love the formula on these. They're really blendable. They're both matte. So again, if you like a matte bronzer, I love them. And I love that they're so big and you get two of them. It would take you forever to go through these. So yeah, really love these. They're nice and blendable like them the last powder one is the soft sculpt bronzer by makeup by mario and this is in the shade light i have been loving this bronzer too again it reminds me a lot of the fenty beauty i would say mm, i don't know yeah this one reminds me a lot like the fenty beauty the kylie the juvia's place where it's just so easy to blend so easy to work with i love the color i love that it's not too warm but it's not too cool either I really do love this one. It gives you a nice airbrushed look to the skin while not being like too much color at once. And then I think the last bronzer I wanted to mention is the Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. So I have been using and abusing this. There's actually quite a big dip in the cream contour. I don't know if you're really going to be able to see. Maybe? But I love this. I do love the powder bronzer too, but I definitely use the cream a little bit more. The cream is just so pretty, so easy to work with. It is a little bit more of a cooler color because it is like a contour and a bronzer, but it's still, it's not too cool where it just looks ashy or like, just like death on the skin. Like it just really does like sculpt you really nicely, but it's not too cool tone. I do wish you would expand the shade range. Again, I don't I knew she would expand that, but love this. I like, I literally love this. I travel with this one because again, you don't have to pack a cream and a powder unless you want options because you got the powder, you got the cream. This formula is so amazing. If you try those blushes, you, I know that you'll like these. So love, love, love this. Okay. Now blushes. If you watch my channel, you know how much I love blushes. So don't judge me. We have quite a few creams and then a few powders. So I'm going to get through these quickly. So first I want to mention the Tower 28 Beach, wait, is it Beach Please blushes? So I have the shade of Power Hour, Golden Hour, and Power, no, After Hours. So again, I'll have swatches of these. These are so good. I love the colors that they have. These have like a nice like dewy formula. So Again, if you're someone who prefers more of a dewy kind of look, you can just like pat these on with your fingers, blend them out, or a brush, whatever, and it'll kind of give you that like nice natural look from within dew. Or if you're like me, you can set these. I absolutely love, love, love these. I love the colors. They're so easy to work with. And yeah, I just really, really like these. And I have been using them a lot. Um, then I want to mention the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Blushes. So I do have the liquid ones and I do like those, but they are pretty pigmented. I feel like these are a little bit more like user friendly. These have more of a like, um, like a matte finish to these, a little bit more of like an airbrush matte finish. <sighs> I wish they would like expand these shade range as much as they do the liquid ones, but I love these. These are a little bit more, again, user friendly. These aren't quite so pigmented all at once. You can really like blend these out. Again, I like to take my brush, blend it on my hand, and then put it on the face. I just love these. I love the colors. I especially love Nearly Berry. I just, I love like this like cranberry shade to it. I love the packaging. I just, I love these. And then the e.l.f. Putty Blushes. These remind me a lot of the Rare Beauty in a way because they're like that whipped matte formula. I love these. Again, finding blushes and like cream blushes at a drugstore can be kind of hard because it's just hard to find ones that work well. I really, really like these. These can go over powder. These can go under powder. I love the formula. I love the shades. I've actually finally figured out that it actually says the shades on the side. So 
yeah i don't know why they made it so hard to find the shades but i really really love these okay. and then uh the melt cream blush lights so if you've been watching my channel you know i love these i feel like everyone loved these because they are just so pretty, so easy to work with. I will say these have quite a bit of pigment to them, but I love these. I wish they would expand on more of like the natural finish and not just keep expanding. Like they have so many shades of the shimmery ones, but I really love these like natural finish. So these aren't matte, but these aren't like super dewy either. They're a little bit more like in between. I definitely use the shade Honey Thief a little bit more because it has that more pinky peach shade. But I do love the shade Sandy Cheeks too. They're just so easy to work with. They're so blendable. I just love these. And I feel like all of them kind of lean a little bit more of like the peachy, like warm shades. But obsessed with those. Then I want to talk about the Makeup by Mario. I actually forgot to mention this in my bronzers. But I'll just go ahead and talk about it now. I have the Blush Stick in Earthly Pink. Oof. So that's the one I'm wearing today actually. And then I also have the contour shade in light. Or is this the bronzer? Soft sculpt shaking, shaping stick in the shade light. Again, wearing that one today too. I love both of these. Both of these are so blendable. You could take the contour stick, you can draw it on the face, you could put a brush in it, blend it on your hand, then put it on the face. You can do it however you want because these really do blend like a dream. They are so easy to work with, they're so blendable. I love his blushes. I love his bronzers. I honestly do just like absolutely love these. The only thing, again, I'm kind of with everyone else. I wish they didn't have the rush. I guess it'd be good for like on the go or like travel. But like realistically, I'd rather just use my brushes. I think they work better with my brushes than like with these ones because they are a little bit stiff. But I absolutely love these and I absolutely love the formula on these. And then some powder blushes. So first ones I want to mention are the Flower Beauty Flower Pots Powder Blushes. I love these. Drugstore or not, these are some of my absolute favorites. I will say the packaging is a little cheap, but it is a drugstore blush. These are so nice. I do have the two pinkier colors, but they do have like a warmer peach and more of like a neutral peach. I want to get those because I just love these so much. I wear this one on like the daily. This is in the shade Sweet Pea. And then I also have the shade Wild Rose. So, mm, mm -mm. love both of these. The formula is more matte, but they are so creamy. They're not chalky. I feel like with a lot of drugstore blushes, they're just like powdery and chalky and you just don't really get a lot of color payoff. The color payoff is perfect with these. They're a nice buildable formula. I just love And then it. the last blush I want to mention, I was going to mention a couple more blush palettes, but I literally just got them this month, so I felt like it was cheating a little bit. So you'll probably see them in like a favorites or something coming up, but I wanted to mention these because I really do love these. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Rouge Romance and Rouge Affair palette. So one's a little bit more peachy and one's a little bit pinkier. So I am wearing this shade right here today, like this deeper like plum. And then we have the peachier one, which is right here. I love how these are so versatile. I feel like so many skin tones could use these. The formula on these are really nice. I will say these are pretty pigmented, so I would just use a very light hand. Oh my gosh. I would just use a really light hand with these because a little goes a long, a long way, but they are really nice and creamy and buttery and all the good things. And I have just been like using them non-stop highlights. So I don't really have a ton of highlighters to mention because I feel like I have what I, like I know what I love and I don't really love like the really beaming glittery highlights anymore. So I'm gonna only mention three. So the Makeup by Mario Soft Glow Highlighters have been some of my favorites because these are very versatile. You can keep these pretty sheer and a little bit more like lip from within glow or really build them up to be blinding so i have the shade opal and then i have the shade pearl i will say i probably use pearl a little bit more it's just a nice everyday shade and then i have the shade opal i will say i think opal has like a little bit more like glitter in it but it's still really pretty i love the formula on these they don't look chunky they don't emphasize any texture i just really like these again if i had to choose one i would go with pearl but i love both of these so much and then i'm mentioning two but they're kind of the same they're like the same thing they're like dupes for each other so i have the laura mercier matte radiance baked primer baked 
powder in the shade Highlight 01. And then I have the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. So these have been dupes for like years, honestly. They're literally the same thing. They're a very soft glow. They're a nice like lip from within. If you want to highlight, but you really just want it to look like kind of more like a glowy, dewy look, you don't want to go with like actual highlight, you will love these. If you want the Laura Mercier, I do prefer the color of the Laura Mercier, but I also really do like the Essence. They are literally dupes for each other. They do the exact same thing. So that's why I wanted to mention both, just in case you want to splurge. I love the Laura Mercier. If you want to kind of go more cheaper, I love the Essence one too. And then the last one, I think I've mentioned probably before, but this is the Natasha Denona Super Glow in the shade um, 01 Fair. This is just... Honestly, probably like my holy grail favorite highlighter. I love the color. I love the way it sets on the skin. I love the way it looks. Again, it's kind of like the Makeup by Mario. You can keep it real natural, lit from within glow, or you can really build it up to be like a beaming glow. I love this. It never looks heavy. It never looks like it's just sitting on the skin. It blends in effortlessly. I just love this shade so much. So wanted to mention that briefly. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention that I guess I could mention like the highlighter. So I actually like to use this to prime, like as of like a primer, mix it with foundation. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Glow Wand. So this is just like a little mini that I got at Ulta. I really, really like this. No one talks about this. Mainly I feel like it's because they advertise this so wrong. They advertise this as like a concealer. And everyone was like, why would you want to do like a highlight concealer? I love this. This reminds me, I haven't tried the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Floss Filter, but to me, this would be very, very similar to this. This is in the shade Light. It's a little bit deep for me, but they have multiple shades of this. You can mix it in with your foundation. You can use it as a primer. You can use it as a highlight. Pretty much the way you'd use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Floss Filter. That's a name. But they are very, very similar, and I just wanted to mention that. And then palette so i do have four that i want to mention again quickly so we have the color pop stone cold fox i have been wanting this since it came out because i do love cooler toned eyeshadows but this is like cool tone heaven because you get like mauves in it you get like grays you get like cooler tone browns you get like some neutral browns you get a black in it i love this palette like absolutely love it and I really do like ColourPop's formula. It doesn't have any of the pressed glitters in it which I'm really glad about. It's definitely more like a matte focused palette but you still have some shimmers in it. I just I love this palette. I've used it all the time since I've gotten it. I really really like this one and then this one I actually have on my eyes today. This is the Rose Quartz by Huda Beauty. This one's probably this one's a little bit newer to my collection but I I just love it. Like I mentioned in my Sephora haul update, the shimmers in this palette to me is what make it. They're just so unique, so beautiful, so pretty. I do love the mattes. They're really nice and creamy. They're really easy to work with, very blendable. I did actually use this today, the like wet thing, as like a topper over the shimmer on my lid. I did like it. I do feel like it's a little bit sticky, so I probably will never wear it on its own. But like topped with a shimmer, I do feel like it looked really nice and pretty. I just love this palette, I feel like. And then we have the Patrick Ta Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. So I don't want to hold mine up because um, I do have a shade that will fall out. And then, ugh, I did, mine did come broken again, like I've said. But like I said in my last video, I don't want to talk about this too much because I did literally just mention it. I love this palette. I love the mattes. I love that you get two cream shades in it. I love that you get like glitters in it, but they're not like... It's not glitters like the ColourPop where it's just going to fall all over your face and just like big chunky glitters. It's again, it's a nice mature glitter. It gives you like a nice like wet sheen to the lid without being just like a chunky glitter. So I absolutely love this palette. I reach for it all the time. The mattes are so pretty and blendable. The shimmers, the creams, the whole entire palette is so nice. I know it's expensive, but I really do love this palette. So if you're wanting to splurge... This is such a good palette that I know that you would use every single day. And then the last palette I want to mention is the Dominique Cosmetics Transition Palette. So I was actually kind of surprised by this one. I traveled with it because you get a big old mirror in it. You get like, they're really big pan sizes. I don't know if I can like compare. Let me see. 
like the pan size compared to the color pop is like these are really big so she did kind of advertise this as you can use it as eyeshadow you can use it for your brows you can use it on your face you can use it as a bronzer blush under eye setting powder whatever you want to use you can use this palette for i actually took this with me on vacation because it's just such an easy versatile palette obviously it's pretty neutral but this is such a good everyday palette because you get cool tones you get plums you get some neutrals, you get some warm tones, you get like your cream shade, you have a black in here. It's honestly such a transitional palette, like it says. Like it's just one of my absolute favorite palettes. For lip liners, I have to mention the makeup by Mario. I mean, I have just been talking about these nonstop. You get a lip brush with them. The formula on these are so nice. They're creamy but they're matte, but they're not drying. They're just so good. Again, if you've tried like the NYX, the NYX suede, lip, suede matte lip pencils or the MAC ones and they're too dry for you, you're probably gonna really like these because they are just like the perfect in between of creamy and matte. Some of the best formula that I have tried. So yeah, wanted to mention those. Then of course, have to mention the Holy Grail. I do prefer more dry matte pencil, but I love the Makeup by Mario. This is the MAC lip pencil in the shade World. This is what mine is looking like right now. I do have a backup, but obviously like I wanna finish this one. I am wearing that on my lips today. It's probably wore off by now. This is my Holy Grail lip pencil. I will always have this in my collection. If MAC ever discontinues MAC World, I will buy like 50 of them because I just love this lip pencil. Like, I just love it. It's such a good shade for me. It has, like, a mauve pink undertone, but I love wearing it with nudes. Like, MAC World and MAC Honey Love. That's, like, my, like, signature nude combo. So, yeah. Love that pencil, of course. And then I wanted to mention the NYX Slim Lip Pencils. And these are pretty much the same thing as the Suede Matte Lip Pencils. But I would say these are just a little bit creamier than the suede ones. I like these a little bit more. I like the colors a little bit more. The shade Natural and the shade Mauve, I absolutely love. I would feel like Mauve and Whirl are very, very similar. So, in case you don't want to pick up Whirl, NYX Slim Lap Lip Pencil in the shade, oh wait, in the shade Mauve. Very similar. I'll have them like swatch beside each other, but these are just so good. They're like $3.00. Honestly, you don't ever have to splurge on a lip pencil if you don't want to because these are really so, so good. And moving on to lipsticks. So, I didn't use a lot of liquid lipsticks this year unless it was for, like, bold lips. So, I have a lot of, like, bullet lipsticks to mention. First, of course, I finally tried out the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks this year. These are so expensive, but I love these. So, I do have one in the satin range. This is in Kim KW. These I love the satin one again if I want to go kind of more of a hydrated like lip look and then I also love the matte ones they're not drying they're nice and creamy on the lips they just honestly these are expensive but they are so worth the money because they go on really nicely they're not going to tug at your lips they're not going to dry your lips out they wear nicely but they have that nice creamy matte formula so I know they're expensive but I really do love them and then the melt lipstick in the ultra matte lipstick i love these i love the packaging on these i am wearing the shade nude today i didn't try the old formula but these are not drying they don't tug again i love the colors they have so 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 many colors they have as dark as you want to get and they have as nude as you want to get and then i also have the shade tees which is a nice like 90s brown but they just are nice and comfortable on the lips. Again, they wear really nicely, but they're not drying. I just, I do really, really love these little guys. So, yeah. And then two drugstore lipsticks. So I have the e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick. If you've been watching me for like the past, I got this in like January of last year, I think. I have been using it nonstop. I, I'm kind of worried it's getting discontinued because I don't know if it's on Ulta anymore. But I really do love these. I will say the packaging is kind of like cheap and not the best. But the color on the inside is so nice. It's literally like 
two or three dollars i think i love to use this as like a mixing shade because it is a pretty light nude so if i want to go like a light nude i will wear this one maybe like a dark lip liner like just in the middle or i'll use it to like top my lipsticks i love to do that with this one and then i kind of use the maybelline nude lust as like the same thing i love to use this on its own with like maybe like a deeper lip liner or if i just want like a nude like a light nude i'll use this but it has a nice creamy formula to this. I love to top my lipsticks with it. These are just like, have been like my go-to lipsticks and they're both from the drugstore. And then glosses, I wanted to mention the Milani lip glosses. So these are the Keep It Full Plumping Lip Glosses. These are so nice. I do feel like they do kind of like a little bit of a plumping effect, but nothing like Buxom or Too Faced or anything like that. They're like a very nice juicy gloss. But if you want like a little bit of a minty tingle to them without going crazy, you would really, really like these. And then I also have the Maybelline Lifter Glosses. So this one is like a dupe for the Fenty Beauty. I honestly do feel like they are kind of a dupe for each other because they are nice and juicy. But I don't know. They just feel nice on the lips. They're nice and like thin, but they're not like wearing off two seconds after you put it on. They truly are a dupe for the Fenty Beauty. I have been obsessed with these. And then kind of on the other spectrum, we have the Too Faced Lip Injection Lip Glosses. So I've never tried the original lip injections. I don't know what the tingle is on those, but these really are not bad at all. I actually kind of like them. I think they kind of feel nice on the lips. Like I like the little bit of a tingle. I don't know. These definitely have like a tingle to them so if you don't like that at all you're not gonna like these but i love the colors of these i love how juicy they look on the lips and i kind of like the tingle so love those and then like probably my favorite of all time this year is the buxom full-on lip polishes so i have tried the lip creams they're not my favorite to be honest i think they can get a little thick and goopy and like streaky so don't get the creams get the polishes because I love the colors of these. I love the sparkle in them. I love that they, you, they're not like gritty on the lips. They give you that nice like minty cooling effect. They make your lips look so juicy and plump. I just love these. Literally, I get everybody onto these Buxom glosses because they really are like my favorite all-time high-end glosses. So yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to mention. This was a really long video. I just know in my bones it was long. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.